objects can be joined together to create an unlimited variety of shapes using Boolean operations. These are joining operations and they can be found on the top toolbar. I'm going to demonstrate how each of these work. First, I'm going to use the add and subtract operations to make this logo. I'll select the rectangle tool and create a rectangle. I'll just add a stroke color so we can see the edges. Now I'll duplicate using Command J on Mac or Control and J on Windows and position it to the right. Now I'll power duplicate with Command and J again to create a third rectangle. Next I'll select the ellipse tool and find the center point of the middle rectangle. I'll hold Shift and Command at the same time to lock the proportions and resize around the center until the circle is as wide as the outer rectangles. To do this on Windows, you would hold Shift and Control. I'll repeat this to create a smaller circle that is the same width as the middle rectangle. Now we are going to add them together and subtract what we don't need. I'll select the Move tool using V and I'll select the outer rectangles and the larger circle. Then I'll go to the Boolean operations and click Add. The three shapes have now been joined to make one shape. I can solo this by holding Option on Mac or Alt on Windows whilst I click the thumbnail to see the shape that I've created. I'll just Option click the thumbnail again to return to the normal view. Next, I want to get rid of the middle, so this time I'll select all of the objects and choose Subtract. Subtract will delete overlapping areas of the lowest object, so the centre and the bottom of the larger circle will be removed because the smaller circle and the centre rectangle sit on top of that part. All of the shapes above the lowest selected layer are discarded in the process. Now I'll remove the stroke and then duplicate the new shape. I'll flip it vertically using the transform buttons and position it next to the first shape. We can select them both and use the add operation again to join these two objects. Add and subtract are commonly used Boolean operations and can often be quicker than using the shape builder as the operations happen instantly. In this logo here, I have a lot of curves that don't touch. With Boolean operations, I can click drag to select them all and then click add to quickly create one curve. Now I'm going to use this to create a logo. Here I have my brand name and I'm going to use subtract to incorporate the logo. First, I'll convert the word dog to curves and then I'll use the node tool to select the nodes in the center of the O and delete them. Now I'll use the Move tool and drag my logo over the O and position it near the center. Making sure the O curve is selected as well, I'll choose Subtract and all the overlapping areas have been removed, leaving a gap in the O that looks like the logo. Let's have a look at some of the other Boolean operations. I'll select the Ellipse tool again and make two circles that are the same size. I'll use the Move tool to position one circle over the other and select them both. This time I'll select Intersect. This removes everything that doesn't overlap, leaving us with an almond shape that's great for eyes. If I toggle the visibility of this black circle layer and move it up the layer stack, I can clip it inside the eye. Now I can select the eye and duplicate it to make another one. Next we'll use Zor to make a shirt collar. I'll select the rectangle tool and draw out a vertical rectangle and a horizontal rectangle with part of them overlapping. Now I'll select them both and choose the Zor operation and any part of the objects that intersect are deleted. This is the opposite behavior to intersect. The last operation, divide, splits the objects wherever the curves intersect. If I select this character, and then apply the divide operation. We can see that her hair has been cut at the edges of the face where it previously went behind her. Using Boolean operations is a destructive action. This means that your shapes are converted to curves and permanently lose their shape properties. If you still want to be able to edit your shapes, you can create a compound shape. I'll use the ellipse tool to create a circle and then switch to the Fill tool to apply a gradient. I'll create a heat gradient using white at the bottom and red at the top. 
I'll click in the middle to create a new node and make this orange. Now I'll go back to the ellipse tool and create more circles. To make these circles into a compound shape, I need to select them all and then go to the Boolean operations. Before I click Add, I'm going to hold Option on Mac or Alt if you're using Windows and then click Add. If we look on the Layers panel, we can see that a compound group has been created with the original circles inside. But on the workspace, it appears to be one object because the same gradient flows over all the shapes. This works for the other Boolean operations too, although they will give you different effects based on the operations that you choose. I'll just use the Fill tool to reposition the gradient slightly. Compound shapes behave like a single object. I can select it and move it around, and I can also add a stroke around the whole object. The difference is that I can double click and choose to select a specific shape within the compound shape. I can still resize it or reposition it on the workspace, and it will update to the gradient of the new location. Because compounds are non destructive, I can go into the Layers panel and drag one of the shape layers out of the compound group to separate it from the compound shape. Similarly, I can drag a shape layer into the compound group to add it to the compound shape. I can break up a compound shape if I select it and look in the Layers menu for Release Compound. If we look on the Layers panel, we can see that the layers have been released from the compound group. I'll just undo that action to get the compound shape back, so I can show you an interesting effect when you combine the Contour tool with Compound Shapes. The Contour tool lets you offset an object's original outline. We can move it inwards or outwards. If I select the Contour tool and move the outline inwards, we get this liquid appearance. If I select one of the shapes inside the compound, I can move it around and it tries to connect to the other shapes. So that was a look at the different Boolean operations and creating compound shapes. Thanks for watching.